Oh, I didn't see you there. Come join me, won't you? Thank you. Of course. Do I know where I put my gloves? No. Okay, Adrian is putting the gloves on. There we go. <laughs> so I see. Right yep, you're in there. Your guitar's in the in the shot. Yes, your guitars are in the shot. Hey, yeah, kinda. up close and personal. <laughs> Hi everybody. Uh, me with another epidose. Uh, I've got one Mark Tigrarian on the line. Uh, he's a friend of mine from uh, Toronto. Back in the day, we were in a band called Random Peace. We did a musical prior to that. And uh, now, Mark, you work uh, not for SoCan, although you did a stint there. You work for the other company that does um, music production. So, was, uh, not music production, music. Uh, ooh. Uh, Supporting music's musicians uh, while they're having their uh, products played and uh, commercialized and used, right? So I was hoping we could be able to talk about that sort of thing, seeing as how in the musical sphere, not only is meeting friends and playing in bands together very important, but also protecting your property rights and uh, doing copyright. So, welcome! <laughs> How's it going, buddy? <laughs> Glad to chat. Yeah, um, we did have a little bit of a conversation yesterday as like a preparation for what we're going to be talking about today. Um, I think a great place to start is uh, how did you meet me originally? Uh, it was Jesus Christ Superstar, was it not? It was! <laughs> we did a few there, so I was just trying to remember which one it was, but it was Jesus Christ Superstar. Yep. We yep. rocked out in the, uh, in the pit there with the orchestra, with the real musicians. Yes! <laughs> um, yeah. Now, learning the music to Jesus Christ Superstar, have you ever played a musical before? No, that, that was the first one. Yeah. I think I did a handful, maybe half a dozen, something like that, total. Half a um, dozen? I know you did the next one. They didn't invite for me, but uh, I politely declined. Um, uh, yeah, no, I did a few more after that. A few Black more. Birdie. Yeah. What was the one with the plant? Little Shop of Horrors. Uh, uh, I don't even know what else. <laughs> Just a whole bunch of them. Little Shop of Horrors had cool music as well. So, yeah, that was fun. But Jesus Christ Superstar definitely was the most rock and roll. Yep, absolutely. Afterwards, um, the uh, um, lead guy who did Jesus, Jason uh, DeNicholas, uh, said, hey, me and the guitarist, we're in a band. How about we jam together and maybe we can do a few shows? Um, you want to tell us a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, so we needed a bass player. I knew a bass player. Uh, <laughs> he, joined Ren yeah, he joined Random Peace. That's basically how that went, uh, went down. And uh, yeah, that was a good time. We played a lot of shows. Mm -hmm. um, I guess uh, Hard Rock Cafe was probably one of the <laughs> better ones, so more fun ones. Yeah. Uh, the upstairs there. The atmosphere uh, up there is uh, much more um, cooler, I would have to say, than, than the other venues. But the other venues are also uh, the basics. You kind of have to do it in the Toronto circuit all up and down Queen Street, right? The Cameron House, uh, the Rivoli. Um, we did um, Sneaky D's. I like to call it Sneaky Cheese. Actually, I got that one from Jay DeNicholas. He called it Sneaky Cheese, and I burst out laughing every time. Yeah, he was always a wordsmith. <laughs> um, uh, how did you guys come about to do that sort of thing? Because it seemed like you would call me and say, hey, we have a gig at such and such a place and such and such a time. Um, have you done touring and doing a circuit before? Were you in previous bands? How, are you asking, like, how we got into getting the shows yeah or? yeah 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 because well, i mean I, it was just calling and emailing going to the place at that time <laughs> quite a while ago uh yeah just walking into the venues do you need bands it was just hitting the pavement you know <laughs> it's that simple for, for kind of you know finding the gigs yep yeah yep. and we had you know you, you get to know other bands too and sometimes they come they uh you know they have a show and they invite you to play and 
you know, we do the same, return the favor. Cross-promoting, right? <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah, it's very important. Um, what have you been doing since then? Uh, since then, musically, my main... Well, I jumped around a few other uh, bands. Uh, Graydon James is a mutual friend yes. of ours. A great drummer and another guy that could do vocals and drums at the same time and play guitar when uh, he he ever had the chance. So very awesome musician. Yeah, for sure. Doing he leads his own band now. He's the lead singer and you know whatever they're called the Young Novelists. Oh, so they're they're still around, uh, doing pretty well touring. Uh, yeah, so played with them for a while and a few other things. And uh, yeah, now my main project is the Stereo Division. So I'm playing guitar. With the stereo division. The stereo uh, division. Thing. Yeah, the stereo division. Uh, and uh, Daryl McCarty is a good friend of mine, known him forever as well. Uh, we started playing together, and he plays guitar and sings, and we write together. It's basically just us, but you know, we have other people, you know, during shows play drums and so on. But mainly the two of us in the band, except for live where we bring in others. You use prior knowledge about how to get gigs uh, and to be able to, you know, further your um, current endeavors with the Stereo Division, right? Everything is just kind of you build upon each other from previous experiences? Exactly. It. I mean, you get to know a network, you get to know who the bookers are, you get to know other bands, friends. Mm. I mean, social media is a bigger deal now than it was. <laughs> well, it wasn't anything back in the random days. Back then it was email uh, lists. That's that's all it was. Yeah, yeah, email lists. So it was, it's, so in a way it's easier now because you can, you know, you can reach out to people and they can see everything about you. They can listen to your music. You don't have to like drop off tapes. <laughs> this sort of stuff. <laughs> That's right. Here, but... <laughs> and if, if anyone's interested in the Stereo Division, uh, where would you point them to? Uh, well, our, mainly we're well, Spotify, Apple Music, all the streaming stuff. We're all over there. Uh, Instagram, Facebook. I mean, if you, I, probably the easiest way is just to Google the Stereo Division and it'll all come up. Yeah, we're, we're yeah, easy to find. Very good. And uh, you had sent me uh, a video exclusive, so thank you very much for doing that. That's, that's super cool. Um, and no, uh, I watched it. It was beautiful, so I gave it two thumbs up. Um, I, yeah, that's on Awaken Alive. It's on our new album, so that'll be coming out soon. I'm not e even sure when, but nice. it'll be before the summer. Uh, how easy is it to get your material there? Um, you have to, what, I guess... Uh, create a login, create a page that describes you, so kind of like an electronic press kit, sort of? Uh, yeah, no, I mean, once you get your music on, they have an artist section, so it's a separate website and everything, uh, like, it's called Spotify for Artists, I believe, uh, and then that's where you have your main page, and you can add your bios and all your stuff, it's just a back-end thing that... If you're not on Spotify, you don't have access to. Mm -hmm. But once you're on Spotify, you have a login, you have all that, you can go on and you can. Yeah. I have a, a special section uh, in my uh, music log slash journal, um, all dedicated towards online things like uh, YouTube. I've got a uh, username, password, I've got a little creative blurb that I want to write and I can change. But Every single one of these platforms, whether it's Facebook, because I have a Facebook page for it too, as well as my own personal Facebook stuff, you know, I, I need to control the description and the content, and I need a username and a password. So it's like every page, all right, this one's for Instagram, next one, this one's for TikTok, the uh, three or four videos that I've posted on there so far. <laughs> um, and and it's important because nowadays um, we're able to record at home using our microcomputers, <laughs> you can tell how old this Gen Xer is when I call it a microcomputer. Um, and we got these programs for, for very inexpensive uh, compared to you know 20 years ago when we first started to play a lot of music and wanted to uh, expand ourselves into and to do things like performance and shows and such. Now we can do our own promotions, we can do our own recordings, we can do our own marketing, we can do our own merchandising and there's uh, even videos to promote how you to be in that independent because before it used to be what an A&R guy would f discover you and then you'd sign into a major me record label they would take a chance and give you a little bit of a money up front so you, you can then record the material which you should have but 
Now it's just like you don't need any of that. You just come up with three or four hits that uh, are surefire and put them on Spotify, get them on a, on a list, and uh, start to have that stuff played and played and played, and you know the big record companies be damned. Um, at least that's or, or, one way of going about it, right? Yeah, or to or it's the other way. Like before, you'd get a label and then you know build your career. Now, as you just said, you build your career first, and then if you get to a certain point, you know now the labels are interested, and you can even grow even further if you decide to go the label route. Right. So it's become really much more atomized and possible um, for even leisure musicians as myself to be able to you know get their stuff recorded, which I'm now beginning to do. Thankfully, because <laughs> it's been f building and building within me, I'm able to finally get it out. And if I get picked up and start to perform shows and tour or whatnot, um, and uh, use some of those old muscles from when I used to, you know, go around pub to pub or uh, travel with uh, internationally, then I'd be able to do so. So it's uh, amazingly how possible things are. And yet, uh, who's going to look out for the little guy? I mean, if I'm going to be wearing the uh, engineer hat, the creative hat, the artistic hat, the um, um, sound guy hat, the driver's hat, and, you know, the roadie hat, who's going to, like, collect all the money when it comes to that sort of promotion and uh, the use of music that I would like to produce? Again, we've got Mark Tagarian, who used to work for SoCan and now works for another company related to it about uh, protecting musicians' rights and making sure that they get paid for the music that uh, uh, companies and other people like to play. Yeah, yeah. So I work for In Tandem, um, and uh, to a songwriter, that's the less kind of interesting part of it. That's where the money comes in that I deal with uh, approaching businesses who use music because um, they need a license do that and so Nintendo's job is to collect the license fees which then turn into music royalties for songwriters and composers so the part where a musician would be interested is the SoCan portion of it so basically what I'm saying is if you're a songwriter you write your own stuff you sign up with SoCan uh, and SoCan will administer all your music for you so whenever you, your song is played on the radio uh, TV or you know, for someone starting out, the most likely source of income is playing live. Uh, you get paid for all those things. You get paid for playing your own music live. Um, and then eventually, as your career grows, radio, TV, and all sorts of stuff. So, yeah, step one for any new songwriter is um, is to sign up with SoCan. And basically, as soon as you start playing live, I would sign up. That's and, uh, great yeah, advice. Money, there's money coming. There's money coming to you, which can help you in your career, right? You um, definitely. Like, how else are you going to go out and try to buy new guitars? You build your career. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, and uh, it's uh, the registry. It uh, kind of makes you there. Like it, it, you puts you on a map, as it were. Um, the first time I heard of SoCan and how easy it is to register, um, aside from knowing that you used to work for them like uh, well, a few years back, was um, uh, there's a lady by the name of uh, Catherine. Um, she is out of Edmonton. She is a, a music teacher. Um, she produces her own music. Uh, she does uh, sound healing and she's a belly dancer as well. And you can find her uh, if you just go onto Facebook or even Google uh, Flourish Music. very very creative person and uh, she did a live uh, stream on Facebook about SoCan and how to register your music and she even had images of what the sheet looks like where you put the song name how to spell it correctly uh, how uh, long it is and you essentially register you submit that to them as part of a package um, yeah. with your own identifiers your address and whatnot and boom it's that easy you're registered and then it just goes now it's all online <laughs> oh, <laughs> even easier. Yeah, uh, SoCan.com. Uh, I checked that out yesterday, too. And they even have a very simple layout with arrows about first thing, create music, second, register, third, etc., etc. And it's actually a cyclical nature, but uh, everything first starts off with writing the material. Uh, I'm kind of at that point right now. Uh, once everything is uh, done uh, in a uh, or formatted, I guess is the best way to say it. Um, I can then register it and still tinker around with it because the songs will never be completed, in my particular opinion. 
um, but uh, I, I would at least be able to have say that it's uh, a product and that it's been registered and now if it's used then I would be able to get some remuneration for that sort of thing. Uh, I can actually create lots of songs and even if I sell them to other people I would still could potentially retain those rights and still get paid right how is how does something like that work yeah I mean so can represents the songwriter not the performer so if a performer you know plays your music you know preferably a famous performer because there's obviously you know um, more money the bigger the shows a lot of these are based on you know, ticket sales or, you know, or, or not even uh, ticket sales, just the amount. If you get played on radio, you know, 100 as opposed to 10 times, you're going to make more money. Um, so songwriting is, you know, where you want to be, I think, as a, as a career. I mean, performing is also great. If you can do both, that's even better. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, writing for other people, a lot of people, you know, uh, kind of, their career moves from performing to maybe songwriting and then you know you can write for other people on the you know in the, on the back nobody knows who you are maybe or maybe they do but uh you know depending but you know there's still a healthy career on the back end they're writing songs and it's just fun that's fantastic so once again uh, get onto socan.com get your stuff registered uh if you're a musician and are writing songs and if you play show you need to submit that music to socan so that they pay you. so you Call the Silicon membership department, they'll lead you through the whole thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you submit your songs every time you play a show, just get in that app and you'll be fine. Also, uh, I remember having that conversation online with uh, uh, Catherine. And she had said that it's also connected with Americans as well. Like, they're, Silicon's Canadian, but there's also American versions of it too, and they do interact with each other. Yeah, ASCAP, BMI are the two big ones. Uh, there's CSAC as well, they're a bit smaller. But um, to expand on that, it's not just the U.S. You know, there's PRS in um, you know in the U.K. Like Jasrax in Japan, Abra in Australia. Like every country <laughs> in the world had their own SoCan, and they're all connected to each other. So I was so trying to play, like impress with knowledge about and America yeah. too. And here you're going, yeah, Japan, Australia, United Kingdom. Like everywhere, everywhere. <laughs> so if you play a show in Australia, uh, you'll get. You know, they'll collect the money for you, give it to SoCan, and SoCan pays you. Likewise, if an, if an Australian play or an American plays in Canada, SoCan collects the money, gives it to, you know, ASCAP, BMI, whoever they're with, and then they'll give their member, their American member, the money. So the whole worldwide network. So tell us more about the, the company that you're working for now. Yeah, like I said, in tandem is actually owned by SoCan and another company called Resound. Uh, which are two music licensing companies and so in tandem basically collects licensing fees bundles them to SoCan and Resound and then SoCan pays their members you know the royalties and then Resound does the same thing um, so yeah my, now I mean my, my job like I mentioned earlier is to just approach the businesses who use music I mean these can be any any business or you know, concert promoter, council business, if you're a concert organizer, a gym, a, I don't know, retail store, restaurant, bar, airline, it really, <laughs> this, anyway, you know, I can say the sky's the limit, but that's a bit of a pun. <laughs> Actually, I have uh, gotten some decent music from my frequent trips using Air Canada, uh, me having to do yeah. some travel assignments, for example. Yeah. I uh, listened to Catherine Durand for the first time, who is out of Quebec, mm -hmm. and she's a well-known Canadian artist. And I was so impressed. I actually cried on the airplane. It was that oh, wow. good. Um, so when I, I listened to uh, Slash and the Conspirators with Miles Kennedy, yeah. I discovered that album yeah. on an airplane as well. That was freaking cool. Uh, and a couple other bands. Um, just because I'm bored. I'm on an airplane. I'm looking out the window, but you know it's all overcast or whatnot, and so there's not very much to see. I've done my you know time lapse recording out the window. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah. we were talking about time lapse recording earlier, um, and and I'm bored, and I don't want to see another Marvel freaking movie. So uh, I put on whatever is popular uh, that Air Canada's got going, and sure enough, I discover music that's uh, the sky's the limit, like you said. They they would pay a license fee to allow them to put music on their plane. 
the idea is music's under copyright. So whenever a business uses music, they're using music that they don't own. The publisher, the, the songwriter, owns that. Mm -hmm. And you so connect with that business so that we would then get the royalties because it's our music and we're members of SoCan. There you go, and that's that's the cycle. That's, <laughs> there you go. It's taken so, like yeah, three my, conversations my, my, for me to wrap that around my head. I know, I know. It, it's a bit of a thing, but, you know, but, basically my personal end is to collect the money and then give to SoCan, and SoCan pays the songwriter. So right. It's a whole... I mean, so can I think it's it's, it's business, right? So, That's the uh, music yeah. industry. This is more the business side of that industry. The you know stuff, the magic that goes behind the curtains that that powers the machine that keeps it going. I mean, there's something to be said about the artists and their creative fuel and drive and what to want to perform, to want to create a song and to perform it, and yet the costs involved with that sort of thing. At, and to continue creating um, when there's like reality out there. I, I call myself a leisure musician because I have um, pretty much full-time hours for the job that I have in healthcare. And that I really enjoy and it's fulfilling in its own way, but I still need to sing and play music. And wouldn't it be nice if I made, mus uh, made money at this sort of thing too? So thanks to individuals such as yourself in tandem and so can. Uh, we have a, a mechanism by which that can actually happen. So I'm really excited about that. Thank you. Well, someone, someone's figured it out over the years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, wh what about the future? What are you planning on doing with your musicianship now? Because uh, you still have a foot in the uh, creative side. Uh, you're working on the business side as well. Um, mm -hmm. what, what, uh, you said that you have uh, just recently recorded an album um, with uh, the Stereo Division, have done your first uh, video, which is pretty good. Yeah. And, well, not uh, our first video. We've done a bunch of videos. Again, you can find those oh. online on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Guess what I'm going to yeah. be doing later today. <laughs> yeah, there's a ton of stuff on there. But it's our latest video, let's put it that way. Awesome. <laughs> um, there will be more. So what's the future? What, uh, what do you have cooking? We we ha we haven't played a sh our last show was August or fall 2019 so it's it's you know and then the world uh, changed pandemic but, uh, yeah, we yeah yeah we haven't got back into playing live yet uh, we do plan on getting shows this summer and getting back into it for the first time in a long time so it'll be good uh, but yeah we ha we haven't got back into it so that's the plan just play more shows write more songs uh, we're having fun. Every album seems to be getting better than the last, in our humble opinion. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we were, we're looking forward to getting back at it. Nice, nice. And uh, you probably have um, some like subscribers and whatnot. Yeah, keeping uh, trying to keep the numbers up, uh, more material uh, and marketing, promoting yourselves too, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, on that end, it's mainly social media uh, and live shows are. Of course, this marketing tool, besides being fun, mm -hmm. uh, you know, get your music out there, let people yeah. have heard and hear it, and, um, you know, at the end of the day, it's also fun, so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, not, it's, not hard, it's not hard work, you know, it's fun. Absolutely. Um, I remember Rancho Relaxo having to trog all the yeah. way over there, uh, again, on yeah, Queen Street, different. downtown. Uh, I was a little late to that show. Uh, I, again, I have to apologize. That was really bad. Um, I, I told the story in, in, in about the, the gigging video that I did in season, was it season one? It was season one, where I had university, then I had to take the public transportation back home to suburbia, then a bus to go to do a store shift in retail, and then take public transportation all the way back home to then go all the way downtown Toronto, where I started with the university, just yeah. across the street to play at Rancho Relaxo, and uh, I think you guys were supposed to be second or first to play and ended up being last and that was all my fault and I feel so bad as a musician and a friend that I did that to you guys. I was so frustrated and angry. I'm just like, this can't work. I'm under too much stress. And yeah, yeah. So we it's rock and roll, man. You get, you get late sometimes. You don't happen. Uh, being, also, being in my, my 20s, you think, I'm thinking, um, indestructible, I can have a girlfriend, I can party, I can still go to university and study and pass exams, and I can still have a part-time job so I can pay for shit, but not own a car, um, and, yeah, yeah, just, ugh. 
And uh, I, I learned a lesson. Like there, there is such a thing as having to too much to do. I mean, sure, in theory, I can schedule it at all, but man, I'm gonna burn out. And yeah, yeah, that was a good lesson. That was a really good lesson. We've had a wonderful conversation. Thank you very much, Mark, for participating and agreeing to do this sort of thing. Season two for my uh, video series is almost done. Almost done. I'm, I'm trying to aim for 12 again like I did the first season. And then third season is going to be doing my vocals and nothing but my vocals. So uh, I hope everyone's looking forward to that. Uh, I might break some glass. <laughs> And uh, uh, Mark, I'm going to continue reaching out to you because you, one, you're a good friend and an awesome dude, um, uh, oh, and uh, uh, two, your profession uh, with in tandem and knowledge of uh, copyright uh, law here in Canada and how it connects is going to be something that's going to be really important for me and for everyone else who's watching this video. So yeah, go get yourselves registered. All right, tell them tell them Mark sent you on behalf of Adrian. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and with that, thank you very much for participating, Mark. Uh, you have a wonderful day. Absolutely.